Okay, so I just went ahead and did them by topic, and then this is the example for that topic. If you see a squiggly line, that's just because I have two topics on the same page, okay? So for the first topic, it says restriction on a variable in a denominator, and it says linear. Basically, your denominator will be a linear kind of problem. Later in 320, the bottoms won't be linear, but that's later, okay? Right now, all you know is linear equations and how to solve linear inequalities, right? That's all we know so far. So for these, you basically have to find all excluded values of the expression, or in other words, find the values of w that make the function undefined. Well, when it comes to fractions, when are fractions undefined? Mm -hmm, when your denominator equals zero. So then all you're gonna do is figure out, well, what is gonna make my denominator zero? And the way you figure that out is by solving that equation. So if I minus 6 on both sides, I will get negative 3w, negative 6, and then what do I need to do? Divide by negative 3, mm -hmm. which is going to give you positive 2. And then I'm going to get w equals positive 2. Right. So this 2 is that restricted value, okay? Mm -hmm. Basically, I can't plug in a negative 2 because if I do, I'm going to get this undefined thing back, right? Okay, so I could plug in anything else I want, just not 2. Okay, that's what that means when we talk about restricted values. So the next thing says finding the intercepts of a nonlinear function. And it's weird because in some of them they do draw lines. So be careful. I know the title says nonlinear. So you think none of the pictures are going to be lines. But as I was going through all the different versions, I saw that some of them are lines. Okay, but not all of them, which I'm guessing is why they put nonlinear. But here they want us to find the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. And if it doesn't have an x-intercept or a y-intercept, then you just click on the button none, okay? So for this particular graph, does it have x-intercepts? Uh, you got a negative one and positive one. Mm -hmm, it's got two of them. You've, You've got, got this guy one. here and this guy here, right. And you said, what are those x values? It's negative one and positive one. Mm -hmm. And then just separate them with the comma, right? Yes, ma'am. Does it have a y-intercept? Positive two. Mm -hmm. It'd be right here, right? Yes, ma'am. And that would be positive 2. I think I do have a couple more graphs just so you can see what happens with those. So here, what would be my x-intercepts? Uh, negative 2 and 0. Negative 2 and negative zero. 0. Good. And then what about a y-intercept? Is there a y-intercept? Mm -hmm. It's that same spot, right? Okay. But the okay. y value there is still 0. Okay. Now, what about on this problem? Does it have any x-intercepts? Uh, 4. Mm -hmm. It has 1 at 4, four. right? Yes. yes. At four for that one. And then does it have a y-intercept? No. Yeah. No. So in the computer, you just put none. Okay. Exactly. Right. It never, ever touches this line, right? Okay, now here it talks about identifying linear equations, and this one's the basic. There's going to be another one that's advanced in a little bit. Essentially, what you're looking at is you just want to make sure that the exponent on y and the exponent on x are both 1 or none, meaning there's either just y to the 1 power or no y's at all, or x to the 1 power or no x's at all. Okay. Is that including, uh, like, okay, on that first one, A you have, so that, that's mm -hmm. Y to the first power. Mm -hmm. But then that's going to be... X up, to the what power? To the negative one. No, the power. Oh, first power. First power. So but, since so both of those are one... Mean anything, right? Correct. No, okay. that's just what the, the coefficient. Co okay. And coefficient. the coefficients do not determine okay. whether they're linear or not. Copy that. So that exponent is one, this exponent is one, so then yes, it is a linear equation. Here, what is the exponent for y? 1. 1. What is the exponent for x? 2. 2. So is this one linear? No. No, because of the 2. Here, what is the exponent of y? 1. 1. What is the exponent of x? 1. 0, right? Because there's no x's showing. Okay? So the no. power of x is x oh. to the 0 because there's oh. no so x's. There's no zero or okay. But remember, we said it could be 1 or 0. zero. Okay? okay? So this one is still considered linear. What about the exponent for y here? That's 1. And what about the exponent for x here? That's 1. That's 1. So is this one linear? Yes, ma'am. 
Yes. Now I have another another one because it's the advanced one, but it's the same thing. Same rule applies. The exponent can only be one or none. But let's look at these equations. What is the exponent of x here? One. One. What is the exponent of y? Zero. Correct. So is this a linear? Yes. Yes. What is the exponent of x here? One. What is the exponent of y here? One. One. And then is this one linear or not? Yes. Yes. This one's tricky. What is the exponent of y? One. One. What is the exponent of x? It is not zero because I see an x, right? Yeah, so it's gonna be it's gonna be one one it's gonna be one x. Almost. It's one down here. But it's one in the front of it, right? But if you were to write a, something that's in the denominator and bring it upstairs, what happens to the exponent? Negative. It negative. turns negative. Right. So this is actually the same thing as saying y equals seven or no not equals minus, right? y minus 7x to the negative 1 equals 0. So what is the exponent of x? It's negative 1. And this one is still a positive 1. So is this one linear then? No, because it can only be 1 or 0. Or zero and that is a <laughs> negative 1, right? So this one is no, not a linear. That one's the tricky one because it looks like the exponent's one, but it's not, right? Because it's downstairs. So you gotta be careful with that one. If you see variables downstairs, just automatically you know it's not gonna be linear, okay? Yeah, and then it's gonna turn it negative. Mm -hmm. So what about the exponent here? What about the exponent for the y? And what about the exponent here? So is this one linear? Because you're going to have, if you add them, it's going to be x squared. Well, why would I add them? You only add exponents when you're multiplying stuff, right? Yes. Would I have to multiply by x in here? No. No, you would just be minusing them over or adding them over, right? Okay. And that doesn't make you add the exponents. It just means you have four apples, take away one apple, and I have three apples, yeah. right? Okay. So it doesn't change the exponent. Okay. So this one is true. true. It true. is the, uh, it's just they don't have it all nice and pretty where all the x's are on one side and all the y's. They don't have it in a nice form. Okay. Here, what is the exponent for y? That's one. What is the exponent for this term? That's four. What is the exponent for this term? One. One. So is this one a function? I mean, I'm sorry, it is a function, but <laughs> is it a, a linear equation? No. No, why? Because you've got the four degree and a one degree. Right. These could were good, but yeah. this one makes it bad, right? right. Yep, so it's a no. So be careful. Make sure you're just looking for any exponents that are bigger than one, or you're looking for fractions, right? That's essentially the only no's you're going to get, is exponents bigger than one, or if you have fractions. And you can have a fraction like this. I could have x over two. That is still linear. That's the same thing as saying, one half times an x, right? So be careful. When I say fractions are not linear, I mean when the x is downstairs. Those are the ones that are not linear. If the x is downstairs, it's still perfectly fine. Okay? The exponent would still be a positive one. Now this topic down here is a little confusing, so I definitely want to cover it. I mean, even when I was learning it, I would get confused really quickly. So I'm going to try to help you so that you don't get confused. But it is really weird how you word it and then what it means. Okay? So it says identifying functions from relations. And it says for each relation, decide whether or not it's a function. Okay? So there's four different relations here. And the rule is, is that every x value has to go to a different y value. Okay, every x value has to go, excuse me, to a different y value. So what that means though, is when you're looking at it, do you have a single x component going to two different values or not? Okay, because if your x value is only going to one y value, you're good, it's a function. But if you have even just one x value that goes to two different values, two different y values, then it's not a function, okay? 
So I'm glad this thing's recording me so you can keep re-listening to that when you push play because it gets really confusing. So this, my domains are considered like my X values and my range is always considered like my Y values, okay? So does this tree go to just one range, one Y value? So then this one's good. Does the word sky go to just one Y value? Yes, because it only has one arrow coming off of it, right? Mm -hmm. What about leaf? Is it going to one Y value? Yes. What about desk? And that's supposed to be desk, not dest. <laughs> yes, it's only going to one. It is only going to one Y value. So since all of them are only going to y, one Y value, you would say, yes, this is a function. Okay. Now let's look at relation two. You've got the number one here. Is it going to one Y? This guy ha going to one Y value. Is this guy going to one Y value? How many arrows do you see coming off of it? Just one, right? Is this guy going to one Y value? Negative seven, yes. Mm -hmm. Is this guy going to one Y value? Yes. Yes. So I got yes for every single one of these X's, which means this is a function. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful because you don't look at how a bunch of them are going to negative one, yeah, right? That's what I was but that doesn't matter. Okay. That's not what we're asking ourselves. Okay. So you just have to be careful with that. Now, here, these are my X values. Okay, the guys in the front are always your X values, right? This is an F, and it is going to E. Do you see any other Fs in here? Yes. You see this F, is it also going to E? No, it's going to M. No. So you've got one X value, F, that's going to two different Y values, isn't it? Right. So automatically it's not a function. But isn't the same thing happening with M? Yep. M is going to F and M is also so going to K, K right? Yep. So M is bad as well. They're both bad. So this one is not a function. Let's look at relation four. So you've got this X value. Do you see anybody else with the same X value? Yep. Now just make sure that they're going to the same. Because if these were both G, it would be okay, right? It's one X value going to the same Y value. They just happen to list it twice. But these are not the same, are they? No. So negative three is one single X guy and he's going to two separate Y values. So that is the guy that makes the thing bad, right? Because mm -hmm. negative or one is going to X, negative two is going to D. These guys are good. Right. It's the negative three that makes the whole thing bad. So it's not a function. So whenever that number is repeated or whether that letter is repeated, like for the first one, it's mm -hmm. going to make it not a function. Right. Even though that Y value is something different? Yes. Even though you got the M and the F. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you just want to make sure that each X is only going to one Y. Okay. Now... This is a visual way to tell whether or not a function is, I mean, whether or not a graph is a function or not, okay? So over there, all they did was list the domain and range and you were supposed to be able to tell, right? But now, what if they give me a picture and I'm supposed to be able to tell, okay? The fastest way to do that visually is what's called the vertical line test. And the vertical line test is essentially you imagining gobs and gobs of vertical lines on one image so you see this graph and you should be imagining gobs and gobs and gobs and gobs and gobs of vertical lines if a single vertical line that you imagine crosses the graph more than once then automatically it's not a function so if you can imagine if i draw just one line right here right i'm imagining off a whole bunch of them right but if I just draw one right there, does it touch the graph more than once? 
What do you mean touch the ground more than once as far as what? Two well, it touches it here, here right? Okay, yep. But then it also it touches, there. touches oh, it there. East and west too. Okay, so, right, and we have to be vertical though. So oh, it wouldn't be, be east and west. Okay, but if you drew another one over there. Even if I drew another one over right here, here or one down the yep. middle or one over here, yep. all it takes is one yep. vertical line to cross through two spots and it's not a function. Okay, all it takes is one vertical line. Now, looking at the second graph, okay, that's this one right here. Is there a vertical line that can be drawn that will cross it two or more times? Yeah. If I just draw one right here, yeah, right? Yep, and the other dots, yep. And I'll hit twice, won't I? Mm -hmm. So this one's not a function. So this one's not a function. This one is not a function. All it takes is one vertical line to cross through it more than once, and it's a no. What about this one here? It looks like that. Is that a function? No, because you could just draw a line right there. And all of a sudden, you've got two spots. So this is not a function. What about this graph? It's kind of like weird, just that one. <laughs> Top and bottom? Is that a function? No, because you can draw a line through both sides. I could draw a line right here, yeah, right? Yeah, there's two spots. And it's going to hit it up here, yeah. and it's going to hit it down yeah. here. Right. So this one is not a function. A function. Okay. Now what about this graph? Yep. Yeah. That one is, because it wouldn't matter where I draw the lines, it's only going to touch each dot one, one time. time. So this one is a function. So first one we've gotten, right? That set that is a function. What about this little parabola thing? It's like a little u. Is this a function? It is because it wouldn't ma matter how many vertical lines I draw. Each one of those vertical lines only touches it once, 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 right? So this one is a function. Now what about this last one? This one's a hard one. It kind of looks like that one, but it's a little bit different. Yes. It is a function. Because even this one here, that's, that's questionable, right? Like what happens if I draw a line right there? It's not equal to. Right, this one, there's nothing there. There's only one dot here. Okay. So it only touches it in this one spot. Okay. So this one is a function. Oh, it's because of the way you got them colored in with the greater yes. than equal to and all, right. and all that. Mm -hmm. all right, gotcha. So that one, there is no point. So it's not crossing it twice. So you have to be careful. Okay. And this one's not so bad. I think most of you have done this one, but we need to talk about it. So it says evaluating functions, and they could be linear, quadratic, or cubic. I think here I have a cubic and I have a linear, right? A quadratic means I have an exponent of 2, okay? So it says the functions f and g are defined as follows. Find f of negative 4 and g of 6. So notice that I have a negative 4 in parentheses here, right? And f on the outside. I have f on the outside here. What is inside the parentheses there? So what has become the negative 4? What was in the parentheses before? When you look up there, what was in the parentheses before? An X, an X right. but now it's a negative it's 4. A negative four so five, X right. has turned into negative a four. negative 4. Right. So what that means is for the rest of the function, it's you've got to turn all the right. X's into negative, four. into negative 4s. Okay. And then it's just a matter of evaluating. Okay. So we got negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 is negative 64. I have no idea what 3... 3 times 64. Theta times a negative is going to give me a positive. And then when I minus 2, I get 190. So when I plug negative 4 into my function, what I get is 190. 
This is just notation. So you don't need to do anything with that remainder of that four? And no. That this is not a multiplication. Not a, this multiplication is a notation of saying okay, plug negative four into your function f. Okay. okay. So here I have a function g, and I'm trying to find g of six. So you got to plug in g x for g. Mm -hmm. I got to plug in six, six. for all okay. the x's in the g function. And if I do my computation, I get negative 27. So if I evaluate g when x is equal to 6, I will get negative 27. So remember, what's in the parentheses is an x value. What you get after all the computation is considered your y value. Okay? So I'm just going to write that little note here. This would be considered my x value. And this would be considered my y value. That's important because that notation is going to be used throughout the rest of the 320 and in college algebra. Okay? So you got to get used to that. When you see f of a number equal to a number, the one in the parentheses is the x value, and the other guy on the other side is the y value. Okay? So here we've got evaluating a piecewise function defined on this interval as follows. So basically what it is, is it's like four baby pictures in one picture, okay? An example of two baby pictures is like this, right? You've got this little line here and this little line here. This is a piecewise graph. You just have that. Um, that would be like two parts. I just have four parts of it, okay, instead of just two. But this is what it would look like if I were to write the equation of that graph, okay? We don't have to really graph them just yet. You will eventually, but not right now, okay? Right now, all we want to do is find these particular values. So remember, what's in the parentheses is x. So they're giving me the x value, right? Mm -hmm. Which means i got to find the y values. How do I do that? You have to figure out where this x value lives first before you can figure out what function you're going to use, okay? So I need to figure out where does negative 1.5 live? Does it live in this interval? Does it live in that one? The first one, the second one, the third one, or the fourth one? Where does it live? One and two, first two. You see it in one and two, yeah. but which one does it actually live in? The first one. Why the first one? Because it's, uh, x is uh, less than or equal to. Right. The other one this one says include negative 1.5, right? No bar means don't include negative 1.5, okay? So because of this little symbol here, now I'm going to use the top function. So that means for this problem, I'm going to use f of x equal to negative 2. And really, does it matter if you plug in 1.5? Because there's no x to plug it into, is there? So the answer is just negative 2. Okay, let's look at the next one. Hold on, hold on. Oh. What happened now? What did you just do? Okay, I see the X is We said it lived up here, yep, it's in right? The first one. So that means we need to use this function. Okay. So f of X equal to negative 2 is the function I'm going to use. Okay, so you don't, you're not going to do anything else with negative 2.5? Right. I'm supposed to plug in negative 1.5. Right. But do you see an X for me to plug in negative 1.5? No, ma'am. No. So okay. the answer is just negative, negative 2. 2. All right. Mm -hmm. If there were x's, I would have to plug have it to plug in, right, in. and okay. do the computation. And do like we did before. Mm -hmm. okay. So now this one, negative 1.3. 1. Which neighborhood does it live in? It lives in one of them. Remember, x is in between these guys. So it's not just negative 2.5 and negative 1.5. It's everything in between. Okay, so if you got a, a negative one point three, then mm -hmm. it's less than da da da. So negative one point five. That will be the number two, correct? Because you're you're not you're not including one point five, but you're going to include one point four and one point three. Right, and everything else and in everything between. Else on down mm -hmm. in between until you so get it's all the way up to 2 .5. it's in here, right? It's right in the middle there somewhere. Okay, so that means that I'm going to use the function f of x equal to negative one. 
Now, when I try to find f of negative 1.3, I'm plugging x, right, right. here. Yep. But is there anywhere to plug in x over here? Do I have any x's to plug in negative 1.3? No, ma'am. No, so it's just negative 1. Wow. Okay. So that's the answer for that one. Okay, one more. We are doing f of 0 0.5. So if the x value is 0 0.5, which neighborhood does it live in? Which one? It is the last yeah, one. The last one this one, including, right. We don't include it. We include it with the line. Correct. Included, correct. That one's the one that yep. includes it. I'm going to use the function f of x equal to positive 1 because that's the function. That's the function. Now, when I try to figure out, when I try to plug in 0 0.5, unfortunately, there's nothing to plug 0 0.5 in over it's here. here. Right. So it's just 1. It's one okay. mm -hmm. Now, if it were 1 minus x Sex. or 1 times x, then I could plug it in and do some math, right? But I can't. It's just no x's to plug it in. Okay. Let's see here. We're still with this plugging in stuff. So it says the fun the title is the variable expressions as inputs of functions. So it says the function f is defined by this. So this is my function. And they want me to find f of 3x. Remember the idea. Whatever's in that parentheses is what I'm replacing x by, right? So I'm looking at this. I'm going to just write it down for reference over here. And they want me to find f of 3x. So notice how the x became a 3x, right? So I just have to do the same thing on the right-hand side. This x has to become a 3x. Mm-hmm. Because I'm writing everything else down the same. The only thing that's changing is the original x is now turning into 3x. Okay? So then when I do the computation, what is 3x squared? 9x squared. Correct. Plus four, yeah. And then if I multiply these two together? 18x squared. Mm -hmm. And can you actually add four? No, not to that. Because mm -mm, they're, they're not like terms, not right? Like terms. No, so then this yeah. is the final expression. Yeah. It'll tell you simplify it as much as possible, but that's as far as I can. Because x squared and constants are not the same. Okay, now this one says domain and range from ordered pairs. So it says, suppose you have the relation S, it wants you to give the domain and range of S and write your answers in set notation. These little guys, the little squigglies, the braces, those are what you use whenever it says set notation. So if I wanna write the domain, and remember those squigglies, the set notation is used only when you're trying to find a list of certain numbers. So remember what we said earlier. The domain is like your x values, right? So gonna be and your range is like your y's. So your, list all your x values. It's going to be 3, 8, and 8. 3, 8, and you only need to list the number once if it repeats. Okay. So that's it. That's my domain. What about the range? You're going to have 8, 9, and negative 9. Mm -hmm. positive eight, eight, nine, positive nine and, negative and nine. negative nine. And those are different from each other, so you do have to list them both. Okay? But that's all set notation means. It means put everybody in the list and make sure you put the squigglies. Okay? That's different from that interval notation. Interval notation is a little bit different, so we have to talk about that one. So this one says find the domain of a square root function, and this is the basic version, and then eventually we'll expand that into the advanced version, okay? So it says find the domain of a function, and it says u of x equals the square root of x minus 5, and write your answer in interval notation. So we have to think about square roots. What kinds of numbers, think of it in two ways, whichever way it comes to your brain better. What kinds of numbers can you have under the square root? 
And what kinds of numbers can you not have under the square root? Do you remember that information? I was going to say, for me, simple for me, it's going to be positive numbers under the square root. Positives, yes. Yeah. And then what about zero? Because zero is neither positive nor negative. Is zero okay in the inside the square root? I say no, because how are you going to find the square root of zero? Well, what times what equals zero? Zero, zero, zero. times zero is zero. So if I take the square root of a positive number, I get an answer. Right. So positives are okay. Mm -hmm. If I take the square root of zero, I get an answer. Mm -hmm. So zero is okay. okay. What if I try to take the square root of a negative number? What does it tell me? It'll give you a domain error. It gives me domain error, which means I can't use negative numbers, right? Yeah. So I could use positives under there, and I can use zero under there. What I can't have is negatives. So what you do when you're doing these square root things is you make sure that whatever's on the inside, it has to be positive. Another way of saying positive is greater than zero, right? Mm -hmm. Aren't all positive numbers it's greater, greater than, than zero? zero yes. But whatever's on the inside could also equal zero. Those two things are okay, aren't they? Then you solve this inequality to figure out what exactly are those x values that we're talking about here, right? So I know that the inside has to be greater than or equal to zero, positive or zero. But what would the x values look like? How do I solve that inequality? How would I get x all by itself? Uh, you gotta add five to mm -hmm. both sides, yeah. And now that x is all by itself, the inequality is saying x would have to be greater, greater than, than or five. equal to five, right. okay? So I could plug in any number I want as long as that number is greater than five or it's equal to five. If I try to plug in something else that's less than five, what's gonna end up happening? Domain. I'm gonna have a domain error, okay? So this is my domain. X has to be greater than or equal to five. But how do you write that in an interval? I personally do not ever do it from this, from this statement. I like to draw it on a number line first and then I put it in interval notation. But that's just me. Some people can go straight from here to the answer. That's fine. But if here's five, right? So you're gonna write, you're gonna write, you're gonna draw your solid circle on there? Solid circle at five. You're gonna shoot it all the way out to your right. To the right. Yep. And then if I were to do interval notation, I just want where the shaded region starts and where it stops. So could you put that bracket? Bracket. Yep, and then you put um, five. Mm -hmm. And then you put your infinity line. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what kind of uh, ending thing? Parentheses. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, this is the domain. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's coming back, right? Oh, boy, <laughs> Good. Yeah. So remember your intervals. You have to show me the left spot oh, first, okay. then the right spot. Okay? Don't get them backwards, otherwise Alex will say no. So it's always the left part first and then the right part. Okay, that, that, this is my question because I got all them wrong. So is it because of me not having that notation right? And you're, and so when you have your your greater than or equal to sign, mm -hmm. you're going to always, it's it always going to be your start number that you, you come out this with? This will always be your starting point. Okay. But you just don't know, depending on this sign, whether it's going to go to the right or to the left. Okay, so say that. So say, just give a hypothetical, your five stopped at it. Eight. So, would your notation be still that bracket will be five? As far as the image? Yeah, like say you were putting on your graphing line. And you had this? And then say you stopped at eight. You're going to shade that area from there to eight. And then what kind of dot? Hold on. So. You're making up a hypothetical thing. So, what kind of dot okay, does it give have? Us a, give us an open dot. Okay, open dot. Okay, boom, open dot. So, you still have your bracket on that side. Uh huh. Right? And you would have five. Uh -huh. And then, since you got an open dot, which doesn't include the number, would it just go to seven with the parentheses? No. It goes to eight. It goes to eight, but it's still going to be parentheses. But it doesn't include eight. It doesn't eight. include eight. Right. Be careful with that. So it goes to that number, but doesn't include, include it. Mm -hmm. you, you can't put seven because seven is actually over here. If I do six and seven, and you notice it does go past seven, doesn't it? Yes, ma'am. So you can't just say it stops at seven. Seven, yeah, because it's 
going to it eight. stops at eight. It just doesn't include it eight. It doesn't include up to eight. Okay. Right. Okay. Good. Okay. So the same topic, it just now it says advanced afterward, right? But it's the same idea. What can happen in the side of a square root? The inside of a square root has to be positive or equal to zero. It has to be positive or equal to zero. Now this one's a little bit, it's not too much harder to solve, but there are more steps involved to solve this. So what would be the first step to solve this inequality? Uh, can't you uh, subtract 6 from both sides? Correct. Subtract 6, subtract 6, that's going to be negative x. Negative x. Is greater than or equal to negative 6. Yep. You still have to divide by x. A divide one, by one, one x. negative 1. one, negative one. Yes, Just negative. the number. Okay, so then that's going to be x is less than or equal to? Correct. 6. 6, good. You got it. When you divide by that negative, you have to flip, right? So he flipped, which is good. So now when I draw this, because that's not what they want, they want the interval, okay? Here's six, which side am I shading? You're gonna shade to your left. Correct, less, less than, than less is than. this way. So now your bracket, your bar bracket is gonna be on that side. Mm -hmm. So then how do I write the interval? I have to go from left of the shaded region to right of the shaded region. So you're gonna write your little bracket? Here? No, above the number. You know your little the bracket we used up top for the five. Just tell me what the interval is going to be. Uh, from from six to, to negative infinity. No, that is uh, not. Then. That's not. Remember, I told you. Look at this. This is your shaded region, right? Okay. I need the left side first, <laughs> then the right side. Negative what's infinity. on the left side? Negative infinity. Negative right. infinity. Then what's on the right hand side? Six. Six. Now tell me your endpoints. It's going to be your parentheses uh -huh. and then your little bar bracket. Little back. bracket. Yeah. So it's not six to negative infinity. That's what I was getting It's to negative know. infinity to six. It so has to be the left, left side of your shaded region to the right side of your shaded region. Okay. Don't just always start at the number. It look depends on what side is shaded. Okay. Yes, because if you put it backwards, you put it like this. Yeah, you get a, uh, Alex is going to kick you out. It'll tell you no, yeah, he's because this is not this. proper. Yeah, for real, it's not. He's going to kick you out because there's no taste. I know that. Right, yeah. don't do that. And you don't want to get no's when you have the right values. You're just not putting them in the right order, okay? Yeah. Okay, so now we've got these. It says, oops, can't see the topic. Finding an output of a function from its graph. This is very, very important because you're gonna need this all the way until you get, I mean, even in calculus. You need to be able to look at a graph and be able to determine X values and Y values, okay? And you need to relate that to this new function notation stuff, right? So it says here, the graph of a function F is shown, find F, of two. Now you have to decide what has it given you and what is it asking you for. So has it given you the x value or the y value? It's giving you the x value. How do you know that? Because uh, two is in parentheses. Correct. So f to That's correct. Function f is, the function is f times x. So they've given you the x value, then that means they're wanting what? The y value. The y value. So you need to figure out where is the x equal to 2. That's here, right? Yep. This is where the 2 is. Yes, ma'am. What's the y value at that particular x value? It would be here, and it's probably my graph is messed up, but what is the y value kind of look like? It looks like a negative what? A negative 1? Exactly. A negative 1. So negative 1. This is what they're wanting. Okay? So you have to make sure that you can read that correctly. They're going to get harder in the next one because now it does both. Okay? So remember, if the number is in the parentheses, you, that's the x, and they want to know the y. So find that x value and then figure out where it's touching the graph to get the y value. So let's look at this one because this one's a little bit more involved. 
it says not only are you finding the outputs, you're also finding inputs. Okay, so you're doing both. It says the graph of a function h is shown below. Find the value of x for which h of x equals 2 and find h of 0. So look at this. It's saying h of x equals 2. So which value did they give you? They gave you the y value. They gave me the y value. So then that means what are they asking me to find? find Correct. So we're going to figure out what is that x equal to. So where is the y value equal to 2? 1, One, two. 2. Here's okay. the y value. And it touches the graph here, right? What is that x value? Negative 1. Negative 1. So that's what your brain needs to be doing. Looking for the y value, figuring out where it touches the graph, and then finding that corresponding x value. Okay? Now this other one, we'll put it in blue. H of 0. Which value did they give you? They gave you x. They gave me the x value this time. Mm -hmm. So then I need to find where's the x equal to 0. It's right here, it right? Yep. Touches the graph right there. What is the y value right there? What is it? One. Positive 1. You got it. And that's what they want. Okay? So make sure attention to what they're giving you and what's missing okay Here they're giving me the x so I got to find the y here they did not give me the x so I need to go find that y. x so they right the they gave me the y okay. so it's just getting used to that notation okay what's in the parentheses is the x what's not in the parentheses is the y okay let's see this domain and range from a discrete relationship. So that's just a bunch of dots. When they say discrete relation, it just means there's gonna be a bunch of dots everywhere. So they want us to give them the domain and range and notice it says set notation again. So that means squigglies and you're just listing values. Remember, domain is which values? X values or Y's? X values. These are X's. The range are Y's. So what is this guy's X value? That's a negative two. Mm -hmm. What is this guy's x value? Negative 2. No, x no, value. X value. What is his x value? Oh, that's 0. 0. What is this guy's x value? 1. And what is this guy's x value? 3. 3. Then now we do the range. So what is this guy's, or I guess start from the bottom to the top, if you want them in order. What is his y, y value? That's negative 2. The next one as I go up would be this one. What is the y value there? Negative 1. And then the next one would be this one. What positive, y value? Positive 1. Mm -hmm. And then that guy's y value? Positive 2. Positive 2. So that's all you're doing is telling me the x values and then telling me the y values. Now I don't think Alex really cares if they're in order, but just to be nice, we usually put them in order from the smallest value to the highest value. Okay. Which is why when you're doing domain and range, always start from the left and go to the right. And when you're doing the range, go from the bottom to the top. Okay? Just so you can already have them in order. Because you could just randomly pick them, but it helps if you go in the correct order. Go from left to right, and then from the bottom to the top. And remember, X is domain and Y is a range. This will be the right answer, though, because it's not in order. It should be. I don't think they're that picky. But, but I know if you click on explain, they're always going to put them in the yeah, correct order. So mm -hmm. later down the road, we're going to need them in order? Like for our it first. depends if you have a teacher later that is real, real picky, real picky about, about it. it. Okay. So, it's easier to read if it's in order. Right? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. well, I mean, you're always going to start from the negative and go up, I think. Right. Now, this one's different. Notice it's not a bunch of dots. It's an actual continuous graph, right? So because it's continuous, it just keeps flowing, right? They Now they wanted an interval notation because we know we don't have just these five dots or whatever, right? It's, it's an infinite number of dots in here, and you can't possibly list them all. How does that line become solid? Because there's a dot here, 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 right? There's gobs and gobs of dots. <laughs> so we can't list them like we do up here. So what we do is we do the interval notation. We just tell them where does it start and where does it stop, right? But it's the same thing. If you're going to do domain, that's the x's, right? So you still got to go from left to right. Now, what I tell people is to transpose this onto the x-axis. 
So notice if I were to take this top part of the image and just like smash it down to the X axis, this would be solid and all of this would be shaded in, wouldn't it? If I were to just take that graph and just smash it down onto the X axis. The yeah, same thing for the bottom. It would become straight, yeah. Uh-huh, if I were to take the bottom part and just mush it up to the X axis, then this would still be an open dot, but then all of this would be solid, right? Because it just got smushed up. Yeah. Well, what is that interval? You've got a closed dot here at what value? Uh, what's that, like a negative four? Uh-huh, negative four, but because it's a closed dot, what kind of end point, uh, end uh, symbol will it have? It has a line like less than or equal. No, 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 as a bracket or a parentheses? Oh, it's gonna have a bracket. Correct. Yeah. And then this side had an open dot. So it's gonna have a parentheses. Parentheses, right but what is the number there? Uh, what, positive four? Yeah, yeah. positive four. Now range is the same thing, y values. Or let me do the range in blue so we can see it different. But we know we've gotta go from the bottom to the top, okay? So again, now I'm gonna do the same thing, smushing, right? But when I, and it's called transposing, not smushing, but <laughs> when I transpose it onto the y axis now. So he, it touches the y axis there, so that's where I separate it, okay? So if I take this and I transpose it all to the y axis, it's going to be solid here, and then all of this is going to be shaded in, right? If you just kind of smush it to the, to the right. And then this part of the graph, if I smush it to the left, it's going to hit here with an open dot, and then all of this is going to be shaded in, right? So remember when you're doing this, you got to go from the bottom to the top. So at the bottom, I'm here, one, two, three, at negative three. And what kind of um, closure? It should be a parentheses. And then how high does it go? One, What's two, that? Three, four, five, five. uh-huh. And then what kind of closure there? Bracket. A bracket. So you just gotta visually like uh, transpose them onto the correct axes. And remember, for domain, you're smushing it onto the X axis. And for range, you're smushing it onto the Y axis, okay? And then you're just giving that interval. And remember, domain's left to right when you do your interval, and a range is bottom to top when you do the interval. Okay, they get harder. <laughs> so we're gonna do, and I have two because they're both doing like two different things. So this one's domain and range again. And they're both still continuous, right? Is it continuing all the way on each of these little parts? So we still have to write our answer in intervals. But sometimes it says intervals or unions of intervals because there might be like two pieces that are both part of my answer, okay? And when you have two intervals that are both part of the same answer, you put the little U in between. That's a union, okay? So let's look at the left-hand one first, this one only. And let's do the same thing we did before with the domain. So for domain, I'm gonna put that in pink and I'm going to transpose both of these pieces onto the X axis. So if I transpose this one, I'm gonna have open and solid. And then if I transpose this part, I'm gonna have solid and then shade it over here, right? Mm -hmm. Now if I do the same thing for this image, uh, this is gonna be solid down here. This is gonna be open down there. And then all of that's going to shade this, and this little part's going to shade that, right? So, you notice that I have two separate pink regions, don't I? Which means I'm going to have two separate intervals. And to tell you that both of those are part of my domain, I have to put the U in between. Okay? So let's do this one from left to right. What value is that? Uh, what's that? Negative, negative four? Mm-hmm. And what kind of end? Uh, Right, parentheses. parentheses and then what is that value that's a negative two negative two and or what kind bracket. of correct then i'm going to put my union because i have more pink right mm -hmm. so i'm going to start here on the left and that's going to be what zero zero with what kind or of bracket. bracket and then over here that's, a that's positive three with a parentheses with a parentheses so notice you have two different parts for your domain right because it's got chopped in the middle now let's do, in blue, we'll do the range, okay? So we're going to smush both of those parts. Do one at a time. So I'm going to smush this one first. So this one is going to be open and a solid, and then this little long strip is actually going to shade in everything, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now if I do the same thing for that one, you've got the solid dot already there, 
you've got this open dot there and then everything in between is going to get um, solid okay so here's the weird one because you've got these open dots here right go from the bottom to the top don't forget that what is the lowest spot negative two negative two does this region here have a gap like the other one did? Am I going to have two intervals or am I just going to have one? I do have intersection, but when I'm doing intersections, I don't need to split them. Okay. Basically, the question lies is this little spot right here shaded or not? That's not shaded from what you've shown. It's not shaded for this side, right? Okay. But is it shaded for this side? Yes, ma'am. It was. So that hole is not really a hole anymore. It's already filled in. Okay. So you don't need to go from here to here because it's actually shaded because of this side. Okay. So then I just keep going and going and going and going and going. And how high do I get? One, two, three. Positive four. Positive four. And then you just have to figure out what kind of ends did they get. What kind of ends did this negative two get? It should have had a bracket on that side. Should have had a bracket. And then the four should have a parenthesis. A parenthesis. So you have to remember, you're putting them both together on the blue. And if one of them already filled up, you know, shaded up the line, and then they have an open dot there, well, it's already shaded, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. If you had transposed this one first, and you had the open dot, then you transpose that one, and it fills up the dot, doesn't it? Yeah, it's still okay, gonna close it so it's still going to close it up. Exactly. Now let's do this one here. Again, we'll try to keep with the pink and the blue. So for domain, I'll do that in the pink. So that means we're transposing onto the X, okay? So this will become this, this will become this, and then that whole little curve will end up shading everything in between. Here, this will turn into a solid dot, this one will turn to a solid dot, and this little part in here will shade in that right there. So kind of have the same situation as before, right? There was an open dot, but then it got filled in with the other dot, didn't it? So is there a gap in the domain then? Yeah. No, it just starts from here to there seamlessly. So what is this number? That's a negative three. Mm -hmm. Those will have a parenthesis. Correct. All the way to? Uh, what's that, one, two, positive four? Positive four with a bracket. With a bracket. Exactly. Now if we do the Y's, the ranges, okay? So now we're gonna take those two little parts and transpose them onto the Y axis. Yeah. So that means this open dot will go here, this open dot will go there, and the little curve will shade everything in between. This will transpose to here, this dot will transpose to here, and this curve will shade everything in between. Is there a gap on this one? Nope. There is. So that means I am going to have to have two parts for the range. Remember to go from bottom to top. So the bottom is what number? Negative three. Mm -hmm. What kind of end? Uh, that's going to be a bracket. A bracket closure. Yeah. And then it goes up to what? Negative two. And what kind of closure? A bracket. Bracket. And then the other part? The union symbol in the, the middle. The union in the middle. And then you're going to have parentheses. Mm -hmm. And then it's going to be negative one. Mm -hmm. Up to? Uh, what you got? One, two. Negative positive four. Positive four. And what kind of closure? Parentheses parenthesis exactly so it really helps if you transpose them okay you can sometimes do that in your head and sometimes you have to actually like do it right <laughs> so just be careful pay special attention to those holes are they going to get filled in or not okay is there going to be a gap or not that helps you to realize if there's going to be a union okay so we're on to another one. This one is finding where a function is increasing, decreasing, constant, given the graph, and they want the answers in interval notation. Now I put three different parts, but in this problem they only ask you for one. So it does have like a little clause in there, if it doesn't apply, select none. That's because if the problem was doing nothing but decreasing, 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 and then they asked me, well, where is the function increasing? I would put none, right? Because the whole thing is decreasing. This one, I tried to make sure that everything was included so I can answer all three questions, okay? But this one also might require unions. If there's more than one place where it's decreasing, I will need to use unions. 
If there's more than one place where it's constant, I will need to use unions. And if there's more than one place where it's increasing, I will need to use unions, okay? So let's go to the first one. This one talks about decreasing. So I can see if I read it from left to right, I can see that it's decreasing here, and I can see that it's decreasing here, right? Those are the two plot spots. So because there is a gap in between, that does mean that I'm going to have a union, okay? And you can do the same thing as you were doing before and transpose them onto the x-axis. Whenever you're doing intervals of increasing, decreasing, and constant, you are always going to be transposing to the x-axis, always, okay? So this will give me a solid dot here, a solid dot there, and fill in the middle. This section will give me a solid dot here, a solid dot there, and fill in the middle. So then for part A, I've got a gap, so I'm going to have two intervals. One, two, three, four, five. So negative five to negative four, because they're solid, have brackets. Then this part here will be negative three to zero, and again, two solids will be two brackets, right. And actually, I'm lying on the solid bracket stuff because of this word right here, strictly decreasing. That's tricky. When you get to calculus, you'll understand why they say that word. The idea is, is that you can never, ever, ever increase or decrease or be constant if you're at one single spot. It takes two spots in order for you to tell me whether it's yeah. increasing, decreasing, decreasing, or constant. Yeah. So because of that, because of that idea that you can never increase, decrease, or be constant at one point, these have to be parentheses. So it's very weird, and it only applies when you're doing strictly increasing, decreasing. Oh, so, so you have to be careful. So when you're strictly decreasing, increasing, they're going to mm -hmm. always be parentheses. Right. And then if you read calculus books, they don't even care if the word strictly is there. If you're increasing, decreasing, or constant, you should always have parentheses, okay? So now if we look, and let me choose a different color. If we look and it says, determine the intervals on which the function is strictly, or no matter, increasing. So when am I going up from left to right? Well, that only happens in this spot, right? At one time, yeah. So if I transpose that and I transpose this, it'll fill in everything there, but I only have one interval, right? Yep. One, two, three, four, five. So it's from three to five, but then we just discussed, it doesn't matter if they're solid. Yeah, you're still gonna use parentheses. You have to use parentheses yeah. just because mathematicians don't believe you can actually increase or decrease at a spot, okay? So now your last one that it doesn't say strictly on there, you're It doesn't matter. Increasing, decreasing, or constant, so use always use the parentheses. It's only domain and range where you have to be particular about the whether or not they're parentheses or brackets. So let's see. Constant. Where am I constant? Uh, at the points at uh, negative, negative 3 and negative 2. Mm -hmm, right there. Yep. And, and then, then where also else? constant down there at uh, 1, 2, 3. You're at negative, well... Well, you transpose this, okay. this part here, right? Yes, this part and this part. Okay. So if I transpose that, you said it was what? Negative. One, two, three. You got negative four. Negative four to. Negative three. Negative three. Remember, always oh, parentheses. parentheses. Yep. And then now this one, what is the x value here? That's going to be negative three. No, the x value. Zero. If you zero. transpose it to the x oh, axis, okay. zero. it's at zero. zero. And transpose that one to the x axis. Be positive three. Positive three. Good. And always have parentheses. Right. The hardest part is not using the y values here. Because you see where it's up and down and you want to use the y's and mm -hmm. you can't. <laughs> you have to use the x's and you always have to have parentheses. Okay. That's the hardest part about this one is that people will want to put them y values in there and you can't. Okay. We don't have a whole lot left. We only have three more and they're not that far-fetched so this one talks about local maxima and minima 
And there's another one that talks about absolute maximum and minimum, okay? Local maximum and minimum is basically any peaks for the maxima and any valleys for the minima. Uh -huh. So whenever they say that word local maxima and minima, you're talking about the peaks and the valleys, all of them, okay? And again, they only ask you for one, but I'm going to go ahead and ask you for both just so that you can get some experience with both. So really, they'll just ask you for one, but I went ahead and asked you for the other one, okay? So here it says, use the graph to find the following. All local minimum values of G. Remember, minimum means the valleys. So that's this little guy here, right, in between two hills. This one is a minimum, and that also means this guy too. And when it asks me for that minimum value, it's asking me what that Y value is, okay? So what is the Y value for this spot? Uh, what you got, negative one? It's negative one. What about for this spot? That's uh, Y value? Y value. That's X. That's going to be uh, uh, So for the left-hand side, it's negative 1. What is it for the right-hand side? What is that Y value? Zero. No, the Y value. Okay, come on down to the Y value. So that'd be a negative 1. Exactly. Okay, copy if it's the same thing, you don't have to list it twice, uh, right? One. So the minimum value there is just negative 1. It just happens to be the same for both, Values. right? Values. But the second part says... At what, or all values at which G has a local minimum, okay? So when they're asking you for the min value, that's the Y value. When they're asking you where, that's the X value. So where does that Y, where does that minimum occur? So they want to know where, what is the X value of those minimums? So what is the X value of this minimum? That's negative two. Negative two. What is the X value of this minimum? Positive one. Positive one. So you had two, two different values. So pay attention to the words. All local minimum values, that's the Y values. All values at which G has a local minimum. So that's asking you where are the local minimums occurring? Those are the X values. So you have to be careful with that wording. And it don't matter whether I'm talking about minimums or maximums, the wording is still weird. So here it says all local maximum values. Again, maximum values is the Y peak. values. Be your peaks. But they are, they're my peaks. How many peaks do I have? Uh, you got one right there. One right here. And then you got another one right there. One right there. This is not a peak. It just no, keeps it going, just and keep going, going and going and going, right? Yep. So the local maximum values would be the Y values. What is the Y value of this guy? Uh, what's that, positive four? Uh-huh. And then you got what, positive two? Positive two. And they're different, so I do have to list both. Okay? Now it says... All values at which G has a local maximum. So now you're going to list all your X values. Right. So it's the X values here. So what is this guy's X value? Uh, what you going to say? Negative three or mm -hmm. three and a half? Negative three. Okay. And then what about this guy's X value? Uh, negative one. Negative one. And those are it. Those are the only two uh, peaks we had, right? So all the, when it says local, local maxima, local minima, that's the peaks and the valleys, okay? When they tell you absolute maximum or absolute minimum, you're looking at the very, very, very highest value and the very, very, very lowest value, okay? And it gets a little tricky, so I wanna show you the pictures on the next page. So 
I got two of them because they're both interesting. Okay. This is an arrow, not a dot. Just FYI. So now it says finding the absolute maxima and minimum of a function. So I want to know the absolute minimum. This is a solid dot, not an arrow. Okay. So what is the very, 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 very lowest y value? Uh, one, two, three, negative four. It's this guy here, which is negative four. So that's correct. What about the absolute maximum? Is this the absolute maximum? No, I would say that point where your arrow is at. It's an arrow, which means it keeps going up, 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 yeah, up, yeah, up, yeah. up, 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 up. It goes up forever. If you cannot tell me exactly where it stops, then you're going to tell me there's none. Okay? You have to be able to tell me exactly where it's going to stop. And it's not going to stop. It's an arrow. It yeah, keeps so going on going forever. <laughs> it will never stop. It'll get to infinity and then go beyond, right? You heard that stupid saying? <laughs> to infinity and beyond, right? <laughs> It's going to do that, okay? So I can't tell you where it's going to stop, so it's just none. This one's weird, too. There's no arrows here. They're all dots. I just have solid dots and open dots. I'm going to do the max first. No, we're going to do the min first. Absolute min. What is the very, very lowest value here? It's this dot, yeah. and it's at negative 4. Yeah. What about the max? Yeah, one, two, three. You got a positive 4. No, I don't. I have a hole there at positive 4. But that's still a point. That's like you're saying that... It's not a point. Be greater. Okay. It's an empty spot. Right. I'm going up to that, but I'm not going to get to negative 4. Or positive 4, actually positive four, right? So we're going up, 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 but we don't get to positive four. I cannot tell you where it's going to stop at. Does it stop at 3.99? Does it stop at 3.999? Does it stop at 3.99999? How many nines can I put after the decimal, right? You can put an infinite number of nines after the decimal, and it still will never be four, right? I could do this. 3.9999999. I could go forever with the nines. Is it ever going to get to four? No. It's still going to be 3.9999999, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so because I can't tell you exactly where the nine is going to stop, you can't tell me what that maximum is going to be. So, so you're going to say none again. So these are really weird with the open dots and the arrows. So that open dot doesn't mean that it's a point. Mm -hmm. okay. It's just saying it's going to go up to it, but it's not going to have a dot there. So it's very weird. That's why I put it on here because I wanted to, <laughs> to talk about it. The arrow goes to infinity, and this is also going to infinity, but in a different sense, in a decimal sense. Okay. There's an infinite numbers between 3.9 and 4. Because the more nines I add, the closer you're getting to 4, but you're still never, ever at 4. And we said before, right, if you can't tell me exactly where it's stopping, it's none. It's none. Okay. I think we have one last topic. And that'll be the, you should be able to do all of the ones inside the, the module 10 for today. So this one says, finding values and in intervals where the graph of a function is zero, positive, or negative. Okay. So here for part A, it says, is f of 4 positive? Well, first of all, what did they give me? They gave you x. They gave me x. So I don't even know what y is yet. But if I know how to read the graph, I can tell you what y is. What is f of 4? x is equal to 4. What is the y value when zero. x is equal to 4? It is not 0. Here is x equal to 4, right? Okay. Okay, what is the y value there? Uh, 1, 2 is negative 2. Exactly.
exactly it's negative two okay. and is that y value positive no it's negative correct it's negative so you just say no it's not positive right and it'll have dot yes or no you click yes or you click no but you have to be able to read and know what f of four is before you can decide whether or not it's positive or negative right so we figured out what f of four was and then we decided nope it's not positive now these are a little bit weirder for which values of x is f of x equal to zero so is zero the x value or is zero the y value or zero the y value this is the y value so here's my y values right this is where y is zero i only have one time where i hit the the graph don't i mm -hmm. and what is the x value of that one spot three. positive three and so three is going to be the answer now if the graph had come back down and maybe gone through that spot too then i would have had to list two parts right i would have had to list whatever it came down to over here and the three so make sure you're looking at the x-axis where does it touch the x-axis how many x values are that are included in there now these are a little bit harder c and d for which values of x is the function less than zero this means when is the y values this is a fancy way of saying y so when is the y value less than zero well this is when the y value is zero right mm -hmm. so the y values less than zero would be all the negatives wouldn't it yeah. so where's the graph negative it's negative in this little chunk isn't it now transpose, if you transpose, isn't it basically just from three to four? Yeah, you could say that. You're just cutting off the rest of that graph. Mm -hmm. right? It's from three to four. The only thing is, is you have to figure out the endpoints, and this is hard, okay? Is four, um, is this y value, the y value that's associated with four, is that y value less than zero? We already figured out what it was. Is it less than zero? Yep, negative two, yeah. So then this can be included because it fits the description, right? This guy's y value is less than zero. Is this guy's y value less than zero? No, because it's equal to zero, right? And this does not have a bar on it, does it? Mm -hmm. So this one should have a parentheses. You have to be very careful there. This guy's y value is zero. Zero is not less than zero, right? So you have to put a parenthesis. This guy's y value is negative two, which is less than zero. So we can put a bracket. So be very, very careful. We're gonna have more practice with that weird idea because now we gotta find out when are the y values greater than zero? That would be everything above the x-axis, right? So everything above the x-axis. But again, they're still asking me about the x's. So if I transpose this whole piece up here onto the x-axis, it's basically going to start here at 1, 2, 3, 4, at negative 4, and then all of that's going to get transposed on, and it's going to stop here at 3, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So again, asking yourself that question. Is this guy's is this guy's y value greater than zero? I would say no. This guy's y value. Oh, okay, because you're coming up as one, two, is mm -hmm. it a positive two or positive three? Right uh huh. Yeah. But it is up there, right? It's up there, so it's above zero. So then I'm gonna put a bracket because okay. it's true. It is greater than zero. Okay, wow. What about three? Is his y value greater than zero? No. No, it is zero, it is zero right? Because it's on the line. So he has to have a parenthesis too. Okay, so be very careful with those. Sure, it's the last one, so I won't make it go away. 